हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई एम डॉक्टर गजेंद्र पुरोहित ट्यून इन टू अवर यूट्यूब चैनल फॉर इंजीनियरिंग मैथमेटिक्स बी एस सी वीडियो टू हेल्प एस योर कॉम्पिटेटिव एग्जाम प्रिपरेशन दिस चैनल इज वेरी हेल्पफुल फॉर यू वेर हायर मैथमेटिक्स इज रिक्वायर्ड सो स्टूडेंट्स टूडे आई विल शो यू हाउ टू सॉल्व पार्शियल डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशन यूजिंग फूरियर ट्रांसफॉर्म्स वी कैन सॉल्व इट वेरी इजिली whether the wave equation or the heat equation so be it anything we can solve this very easily with the help of fourier transform but the biggest problem students face here is deciding whether to use the fourier cosine transform the fourier sine transform or the fourier transform so the given conditions in the question will tell us whether to use the fourier sine transform fourier cosine transform or just the fourier transform so students i'll try to explain all these things through this video plus we will solve some questions here let's begin so students let's get started if we have any partial differential equation and inside that equation should we use the fourier sine transform fourier cosine transform or just the fourier transform how do we know this so students here we have conditions there are conditions given to us for solving the partial differential equation now let's say if we are given u 0 t or u at x is equal to 0 or x greater than 0 in that case we will apply the fourier sine transform here if by chance u x 0 t is given here or this means that if del u by del x at x equals 0 is given and x is greater than 0 then in that case we use the fourier cosine transform if we aren't given the above conditions and the only condition given is x ranges from minus infinity to plus infinity so here we only apply the fourier transform there's a slight difference here that when we take the laplace transform we always take the laplace transform with respect to t but when we use the fourier transform we will do it with respect to x just remember this For example we have del 2u by del x square and u 0t is given. In that case students what we will do the value which is here is root 2 by pi s u 0t minus s square u bar s. If this condition is given we will use the fourier cosine transform which is del 2u by del x square is equal to minus root 2 by pi u x 0t minus s square u bar c. c means the fourier cosine transform of u right? If this is given then we'll have these two terms. If these two terms are not given then only this term will be present rest two will not be present is that clear and now it is being discussed that what if we apply the fourier transform to del u by del t if we take fourier transform it will become du bar by dt if we take sin it will become u bar sin using cosine transform it becomes u bar cosine which doesn't change t like the laplace transform x was not affected there similarly so does for t here this means we apply the fourier transform on x and we consider t as it is clear there is a small difference you need to understand if we take the fourier transform at uxt t will remain the same x will be replaced with s and u will become u bar i hope you are clear now you'll say sir things are not clear from the formula we'll practice through questions you will understand everything through questions don't worry i'll try to solve the questions that have already been in the exams i'm explaining this again i'm repeating this students if in any question u 0t is given so here we use the fourier sine transform to solve the partial differential equation Let's say if we are given u x 0 t in a question with del u by del x at x, del u by del x at x is equal to zero if this is given in the question. Then in that case we use the infinite cosine transform. Is that clear? Now I'll give you an example using this equation. Look here. It asks to solve partial differential equation where x is greater than zero and t is greater than zero. Students preparing for the CSIR net exam. This is very important for you because such questions come in your exams and you wonder how to solve them, right? because you can use laplace to solve heat and wave equations you can also use other methods however there are specific types of questions where you have to use fourier so students here we need to see whether we should use cosine or sine all the questions we've today they are all about the cosine transform and i will explain them ux 0 t is given in the question you are given the value of ux 0 t which means we'll use the fourier cosine transform let's see how to do it just pay close attention as we have this question del u by del t is equal to del 2u by given that del x square and x is greater than 0 and this condition is given this means fourier cosine transform will be applied so what will we do on both sides we'll apply the fourier cosine transform we'll get del u by del t and students this will be the fourier cosine transform which is del 2u by del x square so we will get this as its value here right and we know that the value of this is du bar c upon dt is equal to this formula present here and this minus sign comes here so we need to pay attention to this minus sign it's 2 by pi 
right minus 2 divided by pi and here we will get ux 0t and minus s square u bar c will be here is that clear students so this formula that i just explained to you now students the value of this formula in our question is given as 0 right so here what we will do we will write it as 0 for this value here so we'll just have this left so students this will be left as u bar c and upon dt is equal to minus s u bar c is what we will get here it implies but keep it separated as we are forming a differential equation so here we will get this as u bar c is equal to minus s square dt students now when we integrate this we will get this as here u bar c is equal to minus s square t plus assume i have a constant for example i have taken a constant here a the constant i took here is a you can also take it as log a if you want if you prefer log a then you can take it as log a understood students if we bring it over here it will become divide so if you see this it's log if we bring it to the other side it will be u bar c upon a is equal to minus s squared t students when the log will move away from here so this will become e to the power students if you see here when we remove the log then we will be getting u bar c here so this will be e raised to the power of minus s square t and the a will go to the other side and get multiplied clear this is the value we have and students we know that the value here what does this mean this means that the fourier cosine of uxt what does that mean students it means that it is equal to a e to the power of minus s square so now i need to find the value of a if value of a is found then my work will be done as we have a condition given we will work with this from the condition i'll try to find this here i will put 0 in the place of t what will i do i'll replace t with 0 please pay attention so what i will do is i need to find the value of this this is equation number 1 now i'll put 0 in the place of t here so students when we replace t with 0 we will get the value of a here now we have ux 0 what should we do with this we will find the fourier cosine transform so you should remember the formula for the fourier cosine transform do you know what is the formula for the fourier cosine transform if we have any function let's say if u x t is given then the formula for its fourier cosine transform is root 2 by pi integral from 0 to infinity students u x t right so what do we get here here we are getting cos sx it's sx is that clear here we have dx students this is the formula for the fourier cosine transform if you haven't watched the video of fourier cosine transform then you can go to i tab and watch my video on it if you want to find the fourier cosine transform of any function we normally use fx here okay so we write root 2 by pi from 0 to infinity fx cos sx dx but here instead of fx we have ux pay attention now wherever we have t we replace it with 0 right so wherever there is t i'll put 0 so what do we get we will get 0 clear so we have to get the value of this here we have this value as a i need its value so students what we will do here pay attention now this will be fourier cosine this we will get as ux0 is equal to so from here we'll get the value as 2 by pi and the value of this is given as 0x between 0 to 1 between 0 to 1 the value given is x for the rest we are not given any information so you need not worry about it now what we'll do we will do its integration then we will get this as students what will we get here we'll perform i late on this we got x here and performed it on cos and we got sign s x upon s will be minus students if we differentiate this x it will be one if we differentiate cos twice first we get sign and on doing again minus cos so minus minus will make it plus this will be cos s x and when we do it twice it will become s square and the limit will be from 0 to 1 so we'll substitute the value from here we'll put the limit wherever x is present we will replace it with 1 this will be sign s upon s plus cos s upon s square minus this at 0 will become 0 we'll put the value as 0 this will be 1 upon s square the value that we are getting here so the value is coming as this clear now we know that the value of this is coming as a from here from here the value of this is coming as a which means what we will get here 2 by pi right and if you want you can take the lcm of this s square right so students this value will be coming as s sin s plus we will get cos s minus 1 now we'll pick this value of a and place it here so what will our answer be it will be fourier cosine transform this u x t right is equal to the answer we get will be we will place the value here so 2 by pi and this we will get and it will come as s it will be sin s plus cos s minus 1 upon s square e to the power of minus s square t is that clear so this is the answer we get here but now you might wonder sir you calculated the value of u bar c here but whose value is this this value is the value of 
it is the value of u bar c. But here you need the value of small u. So we need the value of small u xt, which means we need to take the inverse Fourier cosine transform. Inverse Fourier cosine transform means there is nothing much to do. Just you just need to write here. Students, what do I need here? I need u xt. So what I will do now is take the inverse Fourier cosine transform of this from zero to infinity. This will become u bar c and cos sx ds. Is that clear? So ultimately, what you have to do here is solve a partial differential equation. You need to find the solution to this equation. So if the partial differential equation is in terms of u, then the answer should also be in terms of small u. But here we have u bar c, right? This answer didn't come when we took its inverse here, right? Then we got the answer. You applied the Fourier cosine transform. But when you apply the inverse Fourier cosine transform, only then you will get the answer. With inverse Fourier cosine transform, we got this. Now place the value here. When you place the value of this here, then root two by pi and root two by pi. What will it become? It will become two by pi, right? And from zero to infinity, then students, this value will come to us as sine s. Plus this will come here, cos s minus one upon s square and e to the power of minus s square t and cos s x ds. So students, this is what we will finally get here as the answer. We can't solve it. What we can do is we can only write this down and this is what will be the answer so this will be the solution to this partial differential equation that we have here right so you have seen that this is how we solve this and i showed you how to do this students we get its answer like this and at the end we take its inverse in this way we can represent the answer here if you want to prepare for csir net or iit jam exams students my books are available on amazon and flipkart you can buy them from there so let's see the next question del theta by del t is equal to c square del 2 theta by del x square where x and t are given as greater than 0 students in this theta x 0 t which we have is given as minus mu and theta x 0 is given as 0 okay and theta x t that is here what is it given as bounded it's given as bounded i already discussed this with you guys for any partial differential equation that we have if we are given theta x 0 t is given what will we do then we will use the fourier cosine transform or students please know that we can also say this as del theta by del x at x is equal to 0. If this is given, we will be using the Fourier cosine transform. Clear? So we will apply this on both the sides. We will use the cosine transform. So Fourier cosine del theta by del t is equal to c square when this cosine transform is applied. So we will get del 2 theta by del x square. Then we will be getting this value as d theta bar c upon dt which is equal to c square and this value will be minus 2 by pi and this will be theta x 0 t and this will be coming as minus s square theta bar c so students what we are getting here is its value right what we will do here is you are already given the value of this here as minus mu so we will substitute minus mu here and solve this we will get del theta bar dt is equal to here we will keep it as minus mu minus minus plus we will take this in so this will be 2 by pi and mu c square and minus s square theta bar will be c here so students what we have here is the differential equation all right take s square theta bar c to the left side then students what you will get here is theta bar c upon dt plus s square theta bar c this is equal to what will you get 2 by pi mu c square is obtained is that clear now we know that this is a linear differential equation students we will find its integrating factor what will be the integrating factor of this? The integrating factor of this we have is e to the power s square. So this is what we have here. This will be dt. So this will be e to the power of s square t. Okay. Now since in this theta bar c there is a linear differential equation. So the solution to this what do you think it will be? Theta bar c dot if which is equal to we get here if dot q dot. So we will have dt plus c here right. So I will take a in the place of c. Okay. So students what we will get here we will have theta bar c dot it will be e to the power s square t and which is equal to this will be i f i f is given here as e to the power s square t and q q is given to us as this so the value we will get from here will be this now students it will be 2 by pi and this will be mu c square dt and plus this is a okay so students here will get theta bar c e to the power s square t which is equal to what so the root 2 by pi that we have here and mu c square can be taken as a common factor because it is a constant. Post integration, it will become e to the power s square t upon s square, right? Plus a will come, right? Because the constant here is s square. It comes down in the integration. 
Now divide this and what does theta bar c mean? It means the Fourier cosine transform of theta. Here we get this xt which means this. Is it clear? And we will divide this. So, if we divide this, we will get the root 2 by pi mu c square upon s square and this will be a e to the power minus s. If we divide, this will be cancelled. And if this goes down, then it will go up and become a. Then here we have this theta x 0 which is given to us as 0. What do we do? Students, we have got the answer here. We need the value of a here. If we have a's value, then it will be done. What I will do here is wherever I have t in theta, I replace it with 0, right? So, wherever you see t, put 0 there and this will become 0. Therefore, from here, its value will be 2 by pi, mu. c square upon s square will be here. When we put the value of t as 0, then we will get plus a here, right? Now, what will we do? We have theta x 0 here. We will take the Fourier cosine transform of this. So, if we take the Fourier cosine transform of this, we know that. If you need to find the Fourier cosine transform of theta x t, we have a formula. 2 by pi from 0 to infinity. This will be theta. So, this will be theta x t and cos s x dx will come here, right? Now, we have t equal to 0 here. So, wherever we have t, we will put 0, right? We will replace t with 0. Then, we will get this since its value is 0. So, if I put 0 here, the value of this will become 0. Thus, students, from here, the value is coming as this. We will get this value as 0 from here, which means this will be equal to this, right? So, what we will have here? This value here will come out as 2 by pi, mu. And c square s square plus a is equal to 0. So, the value of a that we get here will be minus 2 by pi mu c square s square. This is the value of a. Take this value and put it here. So, we have theta bar c. That will become theta bar. Ultimately, I can write it as theta bar c, right? So, this will be the value we get. This will be the value we get here 2 by pi and mu c square upon s square. If we pick up this value and put it here, then we will take minus 2 by pi mu c square s square e to the power minus s square t. Students remove common terms from here. So, common factor from here will be 2 by pi and mu c square and s square. Then this will be 1 minus e to the power s square t will come. So, we will get this here. Since our answer should be in terms of theta, we have theta bar c here. So, what we will do is, we will take its inverse Fourier sine transform, inverse Fourier cosine transform, sorry. So, what we will do? Theta will be here, x t which is equal to, this will be 2 by pi here. From 0 to infinity and here, this will be theta bar. It is c, right? We can write it like s t, right? And we will get this here as cos s x d s. Clear students? Now, take this value and put it here. When we take this value and put here, root 2 by pi, root 2 by pi. What will it become? It will become 2 by pi. This will be from 0 to infinity. We will get its value from here. Mu c square, s square, 1 minus s square t. And cos s x d s will come, right? And here what we will get? We will get its value. So, in this way, we can solve the partial differential equation with the help of Fourier transform. But you need to keep this one thing in mind. That when should we use Fourier cosine? When should we use sine? And when should we use Fourier? You need to be clear with this. So, we can do it in this way. Try this question. Tell us in the comment section how much time it took you to solve. Please comment and let me know. We have this given. You need to understand what we have to find here. We have a condition given. This is the same type of question I had shown you. Before we had x, but now we have 1. So, you can easily solve this. What is its answer? Please let us know in the comments. For videos about Fourier transform, you can check out the entire playlist. If you are preparing for CSIR net gate or any competitive exam, or if you are looking to improve your general aptitude, you can check out the series here and you can subscribe and thank you very much. Thank you. Bye.